If you are looking for an easy to grow perennial, one that will look great with minimal care and is also popular with gardeners, then look no further than the agapanthus. In a commercial nursery, agapanthus can be grown in one of two ways, by seed or division. In this video we are going to focus on propagating these plants by dividing them, and will dedicate another video to seed production. If you like what you see in this video, you can download our ebook on agapanthus division. Here at Agriculture Academy, we are passionate about sharing our expert knowledge with you. On our channel, you will find videos on plant propagation, tips for starting side hustles, animal husbandry and everything in between. Before we get into the details of dividing agapanthus, let's first take a deeper look at the propagation technique of division. This is one of the easiest propagation techniques that simply breaks the underground vegetative organs, whether they be stolons, bulbs or tubers, into their individual parts. The agapanthus grows from a stolon-like rhizome, from which many other rhizomes will grow. Once this happens, we can come in and separate them so they can grow their own plant. Not only is this a great way of increasing your planting stock in a virtually cost-free manner, but mature agapanthus plants should also be dug up and divided every few years to keep the plants healthy and neat. In this video, we are using a variety called agapanthus nana, which produces white and purple flowers, but the plant remains more compact and does not grow as large as some of the other varieties. To start dividing your plants, gently remove them from the current bags or dig them up from the ground. Give them a soft shake to loosen the soil around the root zone. You can start by breaking the root zone into smaller, more manageable clumps in the beginning and work from there. For this variety, you can divide the plant into singles or keep entire rhizomes intact. When removing single pieces, you must always make sure that they have at least one root growing from the base. This method is best suited to removing smaller pieces from an established rhizome. You can then plant these singles into trays. The great thing about singles is that you can increase your stock dramatically and they make a more efficient use of space. On the other hand, because some of them may have only a few roots, they will need more care and watering compared to the divided rhizomes. You can also plant smaller pieces of rhizomes into these trays. If you are doing so, then you should remove about two-thirds of the root length and give the tops a trim. This will help the plants cope with the stress of division and transplanting by limiting the amount of transpiration that is lost before the root zone develops and water uptake is restored to normal. Keep these trays well watered, out of direct sunlight and you can transplant them into individual bags once they have outgrown the trays. If you are planting larger rhizomes, it would be best to use individual containers or larger trays. You can also trim the root zone and rhizome itself to about a third of the size and give the tops a cut. If you use larger pieces of rhizome, you can expect your plants to mature faster and tolerate stress better, but the containers and bigger trays will be more bulky. And that's how easy it is to divide agapanthus plants. 
The best time to do this will be during periods of non-active growth, like in the autumn or late winter time. It is best to avoid doing this in the middle of winter because the newly divided plants will not tolerate cold stress as individuals nearly as well as they would have when they were still clumped together. We hope you learned something new from this video, remember to check out the link in the description for your copy of our ebook on Agapanthus division and we will see you in the next one.